I would like for us to come together. I would like to, to reach out to the patients in your group. The medical board needs patients. I need some people to go with me in front of the board so I'm not the only one there saying that this works for me. We need the support of medical doctors, of our medical nursing community. That's who legislation has told us they trust. And it was very scary because at that point you're, you're saying, okay, I have been on the news. Everyone has been to my house. They are coming to my house. What now do I do? So, you know, there, um, it wasn't just the fear of losing the caregivers to help. It's, it's also, oh, my life is just, we're going to change right now. And, and we had to start thinking about in our house, who's coming to take care of Allie? Do we need to take her out of the house right now before they get here? You know, it, it becomes a very serious, very serious um, situation. Medical marijuana is completely legal in North Carolina. There's no exception for medical marijuana. And it's, any, if you're, regard, any medical condition you have, if you use marijuana, you're treated just the same as anybody else who, who has marijuana. Um, Brick lumbar disease, at this stage, Allie has um, progressive myoclonus. So when she seizes or has a myoclonic activity, she has um, palatal myoclonus, which affects all of the throat muscles in the tongue. She has occupalatal, which do eyes, ears, and everything. She also has a truncal, which causes a hiccup, which is actually her diaphragm seizing. She has full body, so everything loses reception. With all of these things going on, sometimes you have to figure out, just like with pharmaceuticals, which one is going to work. This already excessive 24-hour activity becomes more violent. So we have to strap her to the bed. And you know, thing, it, it changes from being something that you or I can control because the, the seizures are so abrupt. We have to slowly um, place her into um, a coma-like state wow. so that it um, subdues her brain and calms down some of that activity. If there were going to be some type of repercussions for me, they would be so detrimental that they would cost a life in my house. Maybe not mine, but definitely Allie's. This law makes it impossible to, to be here. I do feel helpless. Um, at times I do feel very helpless, um, especially if um, we don't have the access to the plant that we need. I feel very helpless because then that means that I have to depend solely on pharmaceuticals. And that means unequivocally we are going to the hospital. The NCCPN is a patient's network, mm -hmm. and what, what's that group mean to you? That is the end of all groups to me. We are the patients. We, this is the reason why we would want to pass the law. Our voices are very important. We, we don't want to be criminals. I, do, I don't want to be a criminal. I just want my medicine. What kind of activity in Raleigh would you like to see us approaching the legislators, our elected officials? Is there anything in particular you, you know, you'd like to see us do to try and be effective? I would like for us to be present. I would like for us to explain our stories. I would like for us to grab them and say, come march with us. Because I guarantee you there's someone that you're treating also in your home with some, or at the point where the doctors are saying, I have nothing else to do. I mean, I think we have First Amendment protections for anybody who wants to exercise their rights, and I think people should. I think. I think that's a good thing within the confines of the law. I can't encourage people to break the law, but all I can do is just tell them you know, what the effects are if they do. But again, if, if you've got a family member or who's, who's very ill and, and they, there's something that's helpful for them, I think that's a good story to tell. And, I, and as more and more people see it, that's, that's the best thing in any way that you can Get those stories out and educate people is great. People should, I think it's a good issue. And, and, and I don't think it's a Republican and Democrat issue. I think, I think Republican legislators don't like it, but I think if you talk to a lot of Republican voters, they're gonna, I don't think you'll, you'll see, you'll see a lot that support common sense medical marijuana reform. So do you encourage other people to try and contact them and other elected officials to, to get their point across and let them know they actually support reform? 
I do, okay. But what I've noticed in, Mar in um, North Carolina is that this, we have contacted them, we've, we've, we've made mass, um, like telephone calls, we've been there in mass groups. The Senate here has said, I no longer want to see these reform activist people come down here because, you know, not always do we present well, okay? So, and so they look at it, everyone as these hippies and drug users and this, they just want some, us to legalize the drug. I don't think that we've been exactly um, quiet or passive in a lot of the cannabis reform so far in North Carolina, I don't. What I think is there, there's only been a couple people Okay, so I think strength in numbers is what they need to see. They've been seeing the same people over the last 10 years. So I believe what will help us is that, again, that mass group of people, some different faces, different stories, because we've had some very strong leaders in our cannabis um, community that started and laid this ground for us, but it's, it has only been them. It really just doesn't make sense when you look at other states where it's legal, you know, and we're just, you know, we're, we're all in the same country here. It's, it, it, it's, there's no way to explain it. We, we need to have people like, people who, who are willing to tell their stories and explain why, you know, they have a medical need, a real medical need for marijuana. And, um, and I think once people understand that more and understand why there's a benefit, you know, on a number of different ways, I think people's attitudes will change and, and hopefully they'll, you know, get their legislatures, legislators to change the law or at least support a statewide referendum. Writing and calling our elected has not moved the medical marijuana issue in Raleigh. Legislators need to hear from us, respectfully, on point, and in person. If we want a medical marijuana bill, passed in North Carolina, we must organize. I'm willing to step out. I'm willing right. to be that voice. Just like the ladies before me with saying, you know, I understand that I'm going to, I may possibly get some legal repercussions for this, but I'm out here speaking for everyone. Sick people need help for legal access to cannabis as medicine. Get involved. Come with us to public events. Let's go visit our legislators together. If we want our medicine, we need to step out. Contact the North Carolina Cannabis Patients Network and your local North Carolina Normal affiliate. Let's make the laws work for us.